Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing blood groups and how they pertain to hematology and oncology. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash madmedicine, we have a complete video playlist for the hemonc portion of step one. There, you can find all the videos you need for uh, hemonc. Or step one now if you, while you're there don't forget to like comment and subscribe to our channel because your support will mean a lot to us and with that being said let's talk about blood groups blood groups uh, are found on red blood cells May basically blood groups are uh, uh, caused by red blood cells having different surface markers and depending on the surface markers you will have specific types of red blood groups and there are several different types of surface markers uh, that are used clinically when it comes to step one there are mainly two that you need to know but just know that there are several different red blood cell uh, surface markers out there now all of these surface markers can lead to inflammation coagulation and other issues if you don't correctly manage Match red blood cells when you're donating or when you're giving patients red blood cells. It is very important to correctly match all of the surface markers or majority of surface markers at least in order to prevent inflammation and coagulation and other issues. Now the two main types uh, that you need to know for step one are the ABO classification and the RH classification. So let's talk about the ABO classification. These are a set of polysaccharides that are attached to the red blood cell membrane. It is very important to understand these two things. Number one, these are polysaccharides. Polysaccharides that are attached to the red blood cells, they are uh, not going through the membrane, they are not intramembranous, they are just attached to the membrane, okay, and they are red uh, polysaccharides, excuse me, very high yield, because this will differentiate RBO, sorry, ABO to the RH classification. Now, there are four main types of classifications. You have the A, you have the B, you have the AB, and you have the O, which has no polysaccharides present. All of these do have polysaccharides, but the O uh, classification does not have uh, polysaccharides on its red blood cell membrane. Now, one thing to understand is between the AB and the AB classification, the main thing that differentiates these uh, is going to be the H antigen. And all of these have different H antigens. O has no H antigen, therefore there is no modification occurring. A has N-acetylgalactosamine, which uh, occurs on the red blood cell surface. That is the H antigen present on the A blood group. On the B blood group, you have galactose on the surface of the red blood cell. And on the AB uh, blood group, you have both uh, galactose and, uh, and N acetyl galactosamine on the surface. Now, out of all this, the main thing you should understand is the N acetyl galactosamine, the galactose, and the fact that ABO classification is based off of polysaccharides attached on top of the red blood cell membrane. When it comes to the RH classification, these are a set of transmembrane proteins that are attached to the red blood cell membrane. They span through the red blood cell membrane, hence they are transmembrane proteins, not polysaccharides. So if you see transmembrane proteins, we're dealing with the RH classification. Now there are two main types, you have RH positive and RH negative. So when you see A positive, A negative blood groups, we are dealing with both ABO and the RH. So that's what I want to talk about from now on. Both of these classifications are usually used to match patients to the blood donor and the blood classification. And this is a graph that is very high yield that you should know. So let's say you have a patient who is in, uh, has an ABO classification of A. They have the N-acetylgalactosamine on their red blood cell surface and they are a positive meaning they do have RH. That means that the surface antigens is going to be the A for uh, the N-acetylgalactosamine and the uh, RH uh, surface antigen because they are positive. This means that when it comes to antibodies in the plasma, they're going to have anti-BIgM antibodies okay so anything that has to do with anti b it's going to be igm anything that has to do with anti rh or anti d is going to be igg like we see in a negative these patients have only the a surface antigen and they have the anti b igm as well as the anti d igg antibody so they cannot get any blood that is a positive they can only get a negative blood 
or uh, uh, O negative blood, whatever. And you can do this for all of these ABO uh, blood cell blood groups. Uh, just go through this this um, this chart right here. The ones I want to point out to you are these two right here. A and B kind of go hand in hand together. What is A and B are just the opposite of each other. Essentially, they're the same. But when it comes to A, B, and O, you should know that A, B positive has both A, B, and the RH antigen on its surface, and it has no, no uh, antibodies in the plasma. Okay, very important. And when it comes to O, O negative has usually an acquired uh, anti-D IgG, okay, this is acquired. Uh, now when it comes to o, no o negative, excuse me, these are gonna be the universal donors of the red blood cells because they have no uh, RH or any surface antigens like A and B, they're gonna be able to donate their blood to everyone and everyone can receive their blood because there is, there's very uh, low chance of any adverse uh, effect happening. They're also the universal recipients of plasma and they can acquire this IgG if they receive uh, plasma and uh, uh, that has uh, um, an RH group in it. Okay, If they do have an RH positive plasma that's received, they can acquire the anti-D IgG antibody in the plasma. The AB positive subgroup uh, is the universal recipient. They can receive all A, B, and AB uh, blood groups and O, and they're also the universal donor of the plasma because right here you can see there is no antibodies in the plasma. Thus, it makes them the universal donor of plasma. There is no antibodies that are going to uh, affect the patients who receive their plasma. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know for step one when it comes to the blood groups. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, don't forget you can find these uh, lectures on your favorite podcast service provider. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.